Welcome to CAD with Mr. Hugh, your favorite math channel. In today's video, we'll be looking at trigonometry and we'll be using the principles of trigonometry to find the missing angles for the four right angle triangles which are shown on the screen. So we'll be given two sides for the four triangles and we'll be calculating the two angles for questions one, two, and three and one angle for question four. All right, so the scientific calculator, you're going to need a scientific calculator and you'll be using the inverse functions for sine, cos, and tan. Now, when you're using the scientific calculator, you need to make sure that it is in the decimal mode, all right? All right, so this is how you would um, use the sine inverse and the cos inverse and the tan inverse you would press this button and then you would press the sine if you want sine the inverse of sine you would press this button and if you want the cost the inverse of cost you would press either your second function on your calculator or this button the shift button and you would press cost if you want the inverse function for tan, you'd press the shift button and then press start. Okay? To use trigonometry to solve the missing angle at A, the triangle needs to be a right angle triangle. And because we are given two sides, we are able to use the principles of trigonometry to solve the missing angle. Okay? You have to look to see that it is a right angle triangle. And how we know that it's a right angle triangle? Because we have this right angle symbol. Able to use it, principles of trigonometry, to find a missing angle at A. So let me circle it for you. All right. Now, trigonometry, for those who like a bit of history, the, the prefix trig means triangle and the metri metri means measure all right we did a previous video introducing you to the topic and showed some worked examples i'm going to post the link to that video in the description below all right now let me recap those the basics and um, principles for the trigonometry so this is how my teacher taught me right so is the cat sits on an old ancient high house now i'm going to draw a grid there but in the exam you would need to draw the grid there because this is just for your understanding all right so you don't need to draw these red lines but was for my explanation of the topic I'll, I'll draw them for you all right now the t stands for tan the s stands for cos and the s stands for sine okay now you have O, A, and H. These represent the different sides on the tr given triangle. So let me identify them for you. H is a hypotenuse, and the hypotenuse in the right angle shown, triangle shown, A, B, C, is the longest side of the given triangle. And the hypotenuse is also opposite to the 90 degree angle. All right, you don't need to draw this arrow. I just draw it for our um, video today. So this side is the hypotenuse. So I'm just going to abbreviate it. So this is the hypotenuse. All right. And here we have the angle X that is given. So the side that is opposite to the given angle is the opposite. So I'm just going to write an abbreviation to save time. This is opposite. All right. And the side that is adjacent to the given angle or the angle being considered at that point in the calculation is called the 
adjacent. So this side is the adjacent. I'm just writing it in a short abbreviation to save time. All right. So what we are saying then is that this is the hypotenuse, which is the H. This is the opposite, which is the O in the formula. And this is the adjacent um, for the given triangle there, right? So what we're going to do then, we're going to write the formula and then plug the values for the hypotenuse and the adjacent in the formula. All right, so this is what the formula says. So remember, you know, it's the cat sits on an old ancient high house. Now, some math teacher use Sokato, but this is the way my math teacher taught me. He didn't teach me the other way. So this is why I remember it from I was in second form or third form up until now. So trigonometry is my favorite topic based on how my math teacher taught me. So based on the information that is given, what we have here, adjacent and the hypotenuse, because we have five. And we have 6, and O is not given, right? So you got the, the one that you would need is the cos, right? So it would be the formula that we're using is cos x is equal to I'm going to, to rewrite the formula, right? So it's adjacent over the hypotenuse, right? And you could write out these abbreviations, but to save time, I'm just going to write A and H. So cos x is equal to, what's the value of A? 5. So it's 5 divided by the value for h 6. Now, this, this x, you know, it represents the angle here. It's not a multiplication um, symbol, or, it can, or you cannot divide the x to get rid of it. This is one, um, this is cos x for the angle, right? Good. So what I need to show you is the as a side and a side like a revision or a reminder inverse operations. So an inverse operation is, are operations that undo each each other. Let me explain. Suppose you have x plus four is equal to six for example right to make x a subject of the formula you would minus both sides of the equation by four yes so this is an inverse operation and as you know this would cancel all right uh, let me show you another example suppose you have five x it's a different um thing now suppose you have 5x is equal to 7 right to make to isolate the x you would divide both sides of the equation by 5 so that it could isolate the 5 right and this as you know would cancel right the two fives here would cancel right good now suppose I write x squared is equal to 13. To isolate the x, and we did this in the previous video, what you'd have to do is find the square root to isolate the x, right? Also, I want to show you Suppose you have the square root of 7 is equal to 10, for example. To remove the square root sign, if you want, what you'd have to do is square it. And that is how you would get rid of the 
square root sign if you wanted to do that. Right, so coming back over here now. Because we want to find the x there, right? What we'd have to do, we'd, find, we'd have to find the inverse of cos. So this is what, this will be the next step. So the inverse operation would be x x is equal to cos inverse and what's that? 5 upon 6. Yes, that's 5 upon 6. So, when we divide 5 by 6, we get, so x is equal to cos to the minus 1. And when you work out this, you would get 0 0.8. Three, three, three. When you find the cost inverse of that, you get this x degrees, you know. This would be equal to thirty three point five five seven degrees. All right, so we can round it off, and x here would be equal to thirty-three point five six degrees. All right, good. We have come to the end of today's video. We use the principles of trigonometry to find the missing angle. In the next video, we'll be finding the other angle, and we're looking forward to seeing you in that video. Please take care. Until then, bye. Thanks for watching the video, and don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification bell, like, comment, and share.